and it reads, Now the Lord is not slow about enacting his promise. Slow is how some people want to characterize it. No, he is not slow, but patient and merciful to you, not wanting anyone to be destroyed, but wanting everyone to turn away from following his own path and to turn towards God's. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. Who has it? First John chapter four verse eight. First John four eight says the one who does not love does not know God because God is love. Can you can you repeat that one more time, sister? Yes. It says the one who does not love God. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. The one who does not love does not know God. Because God is love. Thank you. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. That reads, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not poofed up. Oh, okay, it's not poofed up. I went too far, did I? Amen. Okay. No, you're good. Okay. Ephesians chapter 5, in conclusion, verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children. On this Sunday morning, through the text that we've read out of God's word, yes. subject matter this morning is God is love. Yes. Love is patient. So imitate God and learn to wait. God is love. Love is patient. So imitate God and learn to wait. Amen. Father God, we thank you for the dunamis power that's in your word. We thank you, Father God, that you allow us an opportunity, Lord, to feast in your word this morning. We thank you, Father, that your word is actively shifting and changing priorities that is boosting our faith in the name of Jesus. We thank you this morning that it's encouraging. We thank you that your word is meeting us right where we're at, God, but loves us enough to not leave us there. This morning, have your way in our souls and in our minds this morning. We thank you and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. 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 Message this morning is God is love. Love is patient, Miss D. So imitate God and learn to wait. When the Lord was giving this to me, I said, I didn't, are you sure? And, 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 it, and it felt like the Lord was saying to me, I'm sure, but if you want to go up there and, and talk about something different, you can go right, right ahead. But that's what I want to talk to my people about. In our text this morning, the Apostle Peter was writing to some believers who were going through many difficulties. They were going through being persecuted and not just, you know, somebody picking on you because you're a Christian, but we're talking about deadly persecutions, losing their life for the gospel. Uh, you see, there were false teachers and these teachers were people who were calling themselves men of God, but were changing the gospel into a self-gratification gospel. Using, and, and not only did they do that, but they were using the people of God as merchandise. They were preaching a gospel that focused on the here and now. And they only preached that to line their pocketbooks with silver and gold. To top this off, Peter says that there were scoffers at this time, and they had come along with their mockery. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3, it reads, Above all, be aware of this. Scoffers will come in the last days, scoffing and following their own desires, saying, Where is his coming that he promised? 
ever since our ancestors fell asleep, all things continue as they have been since the beginning of creation. Not only did Peter warn of these type of people who called themselves believers, they called themselves Christians, but the apostle Paul told the church sort of like the same thing. In Acts chapter 20, verse 29 and 30, Paul says, I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Men will rise up even from your own number and distort the truth to lure the disciples into following them. My brothers and sisters, on this Sunday morning, I'm here to testify that on this morning, that we as a people of God, also for those of us that might not have a relationship with God at this portion, we could stand to learn a thing about God's love from Peter's words. You see, after Jesus ascended back into the heaven, the Christians that were alive at that time, you see their hope and their desires and their faith and their dedica and dedication and their faithfulness was firmly attached and anchored to the promise of his immediate return. The Christians that were left when Jesus ascended and went back to heaven, their hope, their desire, their faithfulness, how they served, their dedication, all of that was anchored, tightly snug to the promise of the immediate return of Jesus. The disciples or the followers of believers in this time, they were living in a transitory state. Anybody know what transitory is? Transitory means it's a brief duration. It's a temporary, the fleeting nature of earthly joy. Uh, it can be, it can be tending to passing away or something not being persistent. See, these believers that followed Jesus when he went up back up to heaven. The ones that were left and alive, they didn't think that Jesus was coming back sort of like we do. Yeah, I know Jesus is coming back. Yeah, yeah, Jesus is coming back. We know Jesus is coming back. Yeah, we just, yeah, Jesus might be coming back. Jesus is coming back. We just don't know when. No man know the hour or the time, but <clears throat> Jesus is coming. Yeah, that's what they say. Jesus is coming. No, they did not. They did not believe like that. They lived in a constant state of knowing that Jesus could return at any second and everlasting life was just a twinkling of an eye away. They were, their minds were fixed on things above and not on this earth. You see, that's why they could share all things. That's why they didn't hoard their belongings. That's why they were devoted to take care of the widows. That's why they were able and willing to be burned alive. That's why they were willing to be beheaded for the faith. That's why they were willing to be stoned to death for the faith. That's why they were willing to be crucified upside down because of the faith. That's why they were willing to be dipped in tar and used as light bulbs instead of denouncing their faith in Jesus. They had set their minds on things above and not on this earth, you see. So as these scoffers came into the church spewing their mockery of the second coming of Jesus, they did this because they had two intentions. They, their mockery, they wanted it to serve a purpose. The first purpose that they wanted it to serve was 
They wanted to feel justified in following their own desires instead of Christ's desires. So they mocked with the intention of feeling justified for, for following their fleshly, carnal nature instead of submitting to God and following him. But the second reason that they scoffed with this mockery was to taunt those who were dying, who were denying their desires and staying faithful to the Lord. Ecclesiastes 8, chapter 8, verse 11, and it reads from Solomon, because the sentence against an evil act is not carried out quickly, the heart of people is filled with the desire to commit evil. I'll say that again. Because the sentence against an evil act is not carried out quickly, the heart of people is filled with the desire to commit evil. So it is Peter's intentions in this text, in writing this letter, to encourage the faithful from falling away from the promise of the return of Jesus. It was the reason why he had penned this letter. And this is the reason why he says this next phrase in, in verse 9. Now the Lord is not slow, but enacting his, he's not, let me say that over, excuse me. Now the Lord is not slow about enacting his promise. Slow is how some people want to characterize it. No, he is not slow but patient and merciful to you. Amen. Not wanting anyone to be destroyed, but wanting everyone to turn, Amen. to turn, Amen. to yes. turn yes. away yes. from following his own path yeah, that's good. and turn towards God. That's good. Peter says, let me bring it to the ICV inner city version. Mm -hmm. Peter is saying, don't get it twisted, brothers and sisters. Don't get this. Don't, don't get this twisted. God hasn't forgotten about his promises, nor is he being slow about bringing it to pass. You see, God is love, and love is patient. Come on. Come on. And so that's why he was able to wait. You see, but just like in the days of Noah, God's long suffering and his mercy mixed with his patience allowed evil minded people another 120 years to change their heart and come into the ark. Yeah. Why would he do that? Because God is love and love is patient. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And he was waiting on them. My brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that it is out of God's love that he balances yep. out his wrath and his judgment with his patience. Peter says that God does this because he doesn't want anybody to be destroyed. But he wants everyone to turn, turn away from following their own path and turn towards God's path. Yes. Yes. Can I give you an example of love being patient? Yes. Um, my, uh, my youngest son, um, Malcolm, when, he was, when, he, when Malcolm was a teenager, and um, y'all know how teenage boys, you can't keep them out the refrigerator. They eat just because they bored. They just they they just walk by. If the kitchen is in route, they could be going to the bathroom. They gotta open that kitchen door. It's just something about it. I used to cringe when I see him walking past the living room because I knew he was either hitting the cabinets or going in the refrigerator. But uh, but teenage boys like to eat. And see, Malcolm knew that there was a rule of the house which is there, there were to be no dishes in the sink 
before bedtime. There might be dishes in the sink at 6 p.m. in which Malcolm, I'd say to Malcolm, hey, Maldro, Malcolm, hey, you need to do the dishes, son, before you go to bed. <laughs> Normal teenager, I have to repeat it. Mm -hmm. Dishes in the sink at 7 p.m. Hey, Malcolm, make sure you get those dishes done before you go to bed, son. Still a teenager. I have to repeat it again. <laughs> hey, Malcolm. Dishes in the sink. It's 8 o'clock, son. Make sure you get those dishes done before you go to bed. You see, love was patiently waiting on him. Uh, uh, and I think that this went on. Matter of fact, I know that it went on all night uh, until I fell asleep. But early in the morning, when I went in the kitchen and saw those dishes in the sink, I'm so glad that y'all don't see me when I'm at home. Hallelujah. <laughs> Man. Uh, see, see, when I went in that kitchen and I saw those dishes in the sink, I knew that Malcolm's decision not to do those dishes last night was final. It was cement. So I did something that all teenagers hate. You, teens, y'all know teens love to sleep in. But I woke Malcolm's behind up early in the morning and made him do the dishes. You see, I was exhibiting patience towards my son throughout the night. But that patience came to a halt the next morning. Genesis 6-3 says, And the Lord said, My son, Spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Long story short, there is a limit to God's patience. There is a limit to God's patience. Some of us some of us might have uh, uh, heard a gospel that that gives that 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 makes God into a servant where He is forced to love us, where it's sloppy agape, where He don't have a choice out of the matter, where we're doing God a favor by laying down our life for Him and accepting His His little measly gift of eternal life. You see. I know that some of you this morning, you say, well, Pastor, you know, uh, you, you ain't really had too many problems that you needed to worry about. And, and you, some of you might, might even think that uh, because Pastor can preach a little bit, that um, you might think the main reason that you're here this morning is to hear a word. But the real reason that you're here this morning is because of the patience of love. Yep. That's the real reason that each and every one of us are here this morning is because of the patience of love. You see, there was a time when I was unloving. There was a time when I was unfaithful. There was a time, Miss D, where I was harsh. There was a time, Yolanda, where I backslidden. There was a time when I was drinking alcohol daily. There was a time when your pastor didn't even love himself. But there was also a, 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 a woman uh, who through love was patient and long-suffering. You see, she endured the hurt and endured the pain. She endured the drunkenness. She endured the unfaithfulness. But she believed that I would turn from following my own way and turn towards God's way. May I suggest to you all this morning that you are here and are able to call me your pastor because of the loving patience of a woman who exercised the love that God gave her. You see, God is love. 
Love is patient. Gina imitated the Lord and waited on me. Hallelujah. That's a good place to praise God this morning, saints. Yes. I know, 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 I know. I know that we tend to think that pastors' families in general, that they're immune to trouble, but that is the farthest thing from, from the, the truth. truth. <laughs> you see, pastors have children that are on drugs. Pastors have children that are not saved. Pastors have children that are unloving. Pastors have children who are actively in sin. But as it was with me, God is love and love is patient. We are to imitate God Amen. and wait on them. Amen. Amen. Wait on them. See, it's, it's, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they said, you know, I, I, you know, I want justice. I want justice. I don't know who was that I was talking to. They said, yeah, you know, all I'm asking for is justice. And, 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 and we was like, well, ain't that funny how we want justice until we messed up. Then we want grace. Yeah. Then we want grace. Yeah. But as long as somebody else offended, drop the hammer on them. Give them the book. But when it's us. It was just a simple mistake. I mean, it was just a couple of minutes. I wouldn't wait that much. I mean, <laughs> can I tell you something this morning, church? If truth be told, had it not been for the long suffering of the Lord, all of us would not be here today. Amen. Many of us who are Christians today, who are believers today, I'm going to dip in your business. You're happy that Jesus didn't come 10 years ago. That's right. I am. Yes, sir. I am. Some of you happy that he didn't come five years ago. Yes. Some of you happy he didn't come two years ago. Some of you are happy he didn't come one year ago. Some of us are happy that he didn't come two months ago. But because of his compassion and his, his loving purpose and his own timing, God patiently waited on us. The reason God has not judged the world already is because of his loving kindness. The Lord gave his one and only son. Y'all know the story. Jesus mm -hmm. yes. gave his son on the cross for our sins. When he did that. That showed that he's a patient and a gracious God. He does not wish to see nobody perish. He is not slow in judging. He is love. And, and, and love is patience. And he's patiently waiting on the world. He waits for all of his people to come to their senses and repent and turn to him in faith so that they might have life. For almost 2,000 years now, God has withheld his justice from this wicked world. Throughout that time, what has the Lord been doing? I'm on it today. Okay. <laughs> Sure. What did you say? You had it? <laughs> uh, don't digress. Over those 2,000 years, God has endured the injustice and the wickedness. He has endured the falsehood and the corruption of the gospel by men. The, the suffering of the saints he has endured. And you might say, why would an all-powerful God endure that? Because, my brothers and sisters, he loves this world and desires to see the last person repent and turn. Repent and turn and come into his family and come back home to God. Because God is love. And love is patiently waiting on them. Speaking of that this morning, I don't know why, but God is telling somebody this morning that you're so busy trying to reduplicate yourself and act like you're saved to everybody else. And today, you know, imitate Jesus and learn how to be patient. Amen. Learn how to wait. 
Learn how to wait. Yeah, I know you can speak in tongues. Yeah, I know you can pray for three hours, but learn how to wait. Yeah, that's good, God. Yeah, I know that you study your Bible. Yes, I know you tithe, but learn how to wait. God is love. Love is patient. Learn how to wait. We are to emulate God. Amen. You see, 